This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's edition of Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock, joined by John Brummett of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Good to see you, as always. Uh-huh. Into the shutdown Friday afternoon. Right. Who won? <laughs> There's your easy question of the day. I'm going to think the Democrats won. Oh, yeah. This a little, think, it played out a little different than you thought it would last Yeah, I week. think uh, the big losers were uh, Donald Trump, Jared Kushner, and me <laughs> for having sat right here <laughs> on an installment that I wish we could take down off the Internet and yes. say, you know, the Democrats need, uh, this landscape's going to change, and as this thing goes on, they're going to have to give him something, do a little negotiation. Nancy Pelosi knows that stuff better than I. Uh, this was as clear, and you had it pretty much right. You said, I think something's going to break and the Congress is going to have to work out something and we'll see if the president accepts yeah. it, which is exactly what I heard you say, which is exactly what happened. So congratulations <laughs> to you on, on having some balance. Just don't start calling me grasshopper. That's all I well, ask for. So. <laughs> Tell uh, me why you think it worked out the way it did. Why did the gambit play out? that way well well th- see this is what uh, pundits do uh, they get it wrong but then when it's over they explain why it worked <laughs> out that way uh, but it's it's all obvious now first Trump did own the shutdown he declared that he owned the shutdown the uh, the polls were all against him 55 percent blamed him 35 or so blamed the Democrats which is just his base uh, the, 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 uh, he was obviously weakening. He was the one going on TV and saying, hey, I'll do something for the Dreamers. Or, hey, uh, okay, I won't give hey, my... I'm staying in the White I'm, House I'm, all I'm weekend. Stay, I'm just over yeah. here if you and, guys and want to hey, talk. And, uh, hey, uh, boss lady, uh, you, I'll give my State of the Union whenever you say I can. Uh, so he was, he was steadily weakening uh, as, you, as you look back at it. And then, as you probably understood and that all of us should have understood, this can't go on indefinitely. You can shut down much of the government for a while and people can be can behave normally but but you know the federal government is involved in a lot of things that have to do with our safety and welfare primarily air travel and when they're shutting down the flights which is the if anything is the heartbeat of American commerce it's air uh, it's internet and air travel those two things I would think when that's happening and then when they're telling you you know mr. president Look at, look at this map of where all these planes are. And they've all got to be at the right height so they don't run together. And we're down so many in, uh, in uh, the station in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, what, maybe we ought to do something. So in retrospect, that's why it happened. But I have, and, and why he had to do what he did. And I guess Pelosi, I, I, I credit her entirely and Schumer just there. But that's sort of, even though the Schumer did work she out a deal. She had the majority in the she house did. that could hold them. But I think together. she, and, but what she did, because I was not the only person of a left or center persuasion saying along the way, hey, let's negotiate. Let's give, we don't care that much about a few sections of wall. Let's get this over with because it could turn on us. She was told that. Not ju- it wasn't, I was the only one saying that. She was told that by mm-hmm. someone in her own caucus. And she said, would you stick with me? I, I know what I'm doing here. This thing is, we're, we're going we're gonna to have this man <laughs> reduced to mush in a few days. And that's, I've never seen as decisive a uh, political trouncing as this. And uh, I, I would simply counsel that uh, these things change. As I say in Sunday's column, when all of the politics is at the extremes, then the weight is on the ends of the seesaw. So it goes up and down like this. Don't you like that metaphor? That's a great metaphor. Thank you very much. I I try to, what I don't have an insight, I try to make up for with metaphor. You've got a visual going in. Right, right. I did it like this. Visual media. Uh, So, so, but but beware, things could change uh, in in two or three weeks. But, well, go ahead, ask your question. Well, I was just going to say, what do you predict will happen by the end of this three week period? Well, I think we should probably ask you what you predict (laughs) will happen. (laughs) You're the pundit. The president yesterday... You can always come back and well, fix yeah, that's whatever the thing. it is that you say. <laughs> you know, by conventional thinking, you would, you would, uh, Trump would accept that he, that he really blew this. He had no end game and that the shutdown was unpopular and that it's all on him. And he would take his losses and he would get whatever little semantic thing. And this whole conference thing is going to be largely about semantics. They're mm-hmm. going to put some more money into actual border security technology and those sorts of things. And they, but, but if he could get a, a section of this, of this settlement from this conference 
that says uh, fence rep uh, wall repair, repair to existing wall and expansions. If he could get those two words in there without any real definite, uh, just he could use some of it to put some wall somewhere, he could claim victory. But he, and this morning, but, but I, and I don't know if he's got the people in the conference committee to get that meaningless semantic solution, whether he would accept it, whether Ann Coulter would ridicule him again and whether that's a factor, uh, which means the only other option, because he's not going to just cower and go away. The only other option is he declares a national emergency and, and, and uses his, and, and presumes to use executive power, and then we litigate that. Yeah. And, and, it, one and of that's those really two, not a solution. No, either, either, a, either a semantic trick that, that lets him save a little bit of face, or he does that. And you know, by definition, you cannot say, by definition, we're going to sit around here for two or three weeks and then decide whether this is an emergency. But that, that doesn't it's make sense. An it's a, or if it's an emergency, emergency you needed to do right. something yesterday. You can't wait to decide yeah. whether it is. I think the semantics will work. Will work. Will be the outcome. I think uh, if he will. And perhaps some of that is just wishful thinking on my part. I would prefer that the semantics be the right solution so that we can all move along the answer to all this, and keep going. The answer to the political games our parties play is mostly political window dressing. And everybody knows the Democrats have won this. And if Trump can have a, can have a prepositional phrase or two words in this outcome that lets him point to something, fine. Yep. That's, that's, that's the, that's the uh, adult solution. All right, let's turn our attention to the latest State of the State magazine from Talk Business and Politics. Uh, this is our preview of 2019, kind of look ahead at what's going on. And you've got a great piece in here that's a profile of our new legislative leaders, Senator Jim Hendren in the Arkansas Senate and Matthew Shepard, the Speaker of the House and the Arkansas House of Representatives. Uh, they're very different people uh, in terms of personality and style. Describe, I guess, for folks who don't know them very well, what you've profiled in this piece. Hendron is the kind of guy who can spend a better part of a day up there in uh, Gravit or Sulphur Springs or wherever he God's was. God's country yeah. is what they call uh, it. Getting on Twitter and arguing with me. We can just have a snark fest all day, even as we have some regard for each other. He's very combative. He's quite, by his own admission, uh, uh, the ego of the, uh, of the fighter pilot. He's, he was, yeah, that's what he, he says, sure I do. Shepard is, is, is a trained attorney with all the caution of, 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 an, uh, of that. So Hendren kind of can get out there and Shepard can kind of pull it back sometimes. Uh, and and uh, I know uh, uh, Shepard said to me, I said, do you even go on Twitter? And he said, well, I'm the kind of guy, I'll type a tweet and then before I send it, I'll ask my wife if it's okay. <laughs> and she will say, you mean where, you, where you're wishing happy birthday to somebody? Because that's how cautious he is. It has manifested itself in what they're still working on and haven't produced yet, which is sort of a bicameral, bipartisan approach to ethics reform. Because not being a lawyer and being solution-oriented, Hendren tr tends to get out there with some proposal, and being a lawyer, reading with... Uh, a legal mind and caution, Shepard sees unintended consequences and right. starts saying we may not need to say this, may need to rephrase that. So that's what's going on there. Together, I interviewed them together and I said, or, or, do you all basically work as two-thirds of a triumvirate or a troika uh, running this? Uh, are, are you, are, are you with working, Governor Hutchinson are you working together with ASA to, to, to have a singular, seamless uh, uh, governance? And they didn't say yes in those words, but yes, that's what's going on out there. <laughs> Ace is a micromanager, and he micromanages, I think, largely through these two. They want, they both want government to work. They, this business we just talked about in D.C. Right. That's. They both say that would, any hint that that kind of thing could enter into the appropriation process, or we might shut down over Medicaid. No. No, they think well, they do have super majorities in both chambers too. The Republicans do as, as well as the. They don't be have, difficult for they them don't to have, mess it up. So. They don't have a three fourths to appropriate in the Senate, do they? Uh, they're one vote shy. Right. So if the Democrats can stick together, which is a laughable notion, and if they would, which is a laughable <laughs> notion, uh, and if <laughs> they could say, for example, this is how Washington politics would apply to Arkansas. 
the Democrats in the Senate can say, let's all vote against Medicaid expansion, the whole Medicaid budget, until they take this work requirement out, because that's wrong. They wouldn't, because a lot of them probably think the work requirement's good. And then we could go home without a Medicaid appropriation, and we could play, play brinkmanship about Medicaid up against the July 1. That, that, I don't see Larry Teague and Bruce Malick no. going that way, Democrats in the No, they're Senate. not going to. And, 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 that's, and that's good. I mean, nobody opposes the work requirement more than I do, but that's not the way to solve problems, which is my very parable for what's wrong in Washington, yep. you see. Uh, lastly, on this uh, profile of the speaker and the Senate president here, I don't want you to give too much away, but I want you to talk about it enough to tease people yeah. uh, deeper into the story here. Yeah. One likes Waffle House and one likes Chick-fil-A, and it? they've had this meeting there. I thought that was one of the more interesting human elements of the story. It just, well, it's seems trivial to me, but if you found it interesting, great, and I hope the readers do too. Uh, I said to you all, as I was advancing this line of questioning about this two-thirds of a cohesive unit, you all stay close in touch. Yeah, breakfast. Waffle House for Hendren, Chick-fil-A for uh, Shepard, and I don't, I, I didn't know that for breakfast. Did you know Chick-fil-A had breakfast? I do. I have young kids. Okay. Yeah. See, that was the big, really? Chick-fil-A has breakfast? <laughs> so, but I think Shepard, um, I hope this is not a tokenized cool or misremembrance, I think he said there's not a Chick-fil-A in El Dore. And, uh, and he just likes it. So gets up here, he wants to take full advantage of being in Little Rock. And Waffle House is kind of a gritty everyman deal, you know, and that's Hendren's thing. Uh, what are you? Are you a Waffle House or a Chick-fil-A guy? I got to tell you, <laughs> I got to tell you, I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm an extra shot latte guy at the Fru Fru coffee shop in Hillcrest. That's what I am. I had you pegged as a Leo's Greek Castle kind I, of I used to go there, but, uh, uh, and I, it's, uh, I still will, but, but, but I've, I don't know, I've, I have to fight trappings of elitism sometimes, you know. <laughs> I don't, because when I'm ordering that uh, latte, I realize what's, what's happened to the old boy from the old Ninerville, you know. <laughs> the story is a great story. It will be well, online at talkbusiness.net tomorrow, Tuesday. It will be or online. Get, or get this somewhere. Or you can get a copy of this, uh, which will are. be up at the state capitol, oh, and uh, maybe in a mailbox coming to you soon. Oh, yeah, right. John Bremmett, thank you so thank much. Thank you, sir. It's good to see right. you. That's all for today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.